Hello and welcome to another video by the Bearded Tech Guy. In today's installment of my Getting to Know Webcore series, we will be taking an overall look at Webcore to get a better understanding of how Webcore works and how to navigate its dashboard. If you are new to the series, make sure to check out all the other videos in it where I will cover the many different aspects of Webcore, provide helpful piston ideas, and go over how to set them up. If you aren't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to be notified when I release additional videos, including more for this Getting to Know Webcore series. For those not really familiar with Webcore, it is an advanced web-based rule engine that works on top of Samsung SmartThings automation platform and delivers complex automation scenarios that users can program. It does so by using a pseudo scripting language that is easy to read and understand by users. Webcore consists of four primary components that run on the Samsung SmartThings hub, and they are the Webcore Smart App, Piston Smart App, Storage Smart App, and Dashboard Smart App. These can be installed manually or through GitHub. Check out the description below for a great in-depth tutorial on how to install Webcore. Out of the four components, we will only be working with the Dashboard Smart App. In order to do anything with a device on your hub, you must add it to Webcore so that it can be interacted with. To do this, open up the Webcore Smart App under Automation and click on Settings. From here, click on Available Devices and select all the devices you want Webcore to be able to interact with. Once you have all the devices you want added into Webcore, click Save until you are on the main menu. From here, you can access the dashboard, which is where all the automation is set up. Besides within the SmartThings app, you can access the Webcore dashboard by going to dashboard.webcore.co and authenticating. For the rest of this video, I will be using a desktop to access the dashboard. The first time you access the dashboard via browser, you will be asked for a registration code. To get a registration code, you will need to open up the Webcore Smart App and click on Register a Browser. From here, a page will appear that provides you with a registration code that is good for three minutes. Enter it in your browser and click the arrow. You will then be asked for your Webcore password, which you set during setup. After initial setup of the browser, you will only be asked for your Webcore password. You will not be asked for registration code unless it's a new browser. Once logged in, you will see the main screen. If this is your first time logging in, your screen will have no pistons. If you don't know what a piston is, don't worry, we will be covering that really soon. At the top right hand side of the page, you will find links for both the Webcore Wiki as well as the form. If you are running into problems or just want to throw ideas out for others to discuss, the Webcore community is a great resource for that and is full of very helpful people. In the middle of the screen you will find some basic hub information such as the hub name and the version of code it's running. Next to that you will see what location mode the hub currently is in. Below that, you will see all of the currently configured pistons. If you click on the three dot menu to the right of a piston, you will get a menu that includes the ability to pause, view, or test that piston. If you see a blue dot next to any of your pistons, that just means it ran very recently. And finally, if any of your pistons have a countdown timer showing, that just indicates there is a timer within that piston and when that portion of the piston will execute next. Moving on to the side menu bar, we will find a few different options. The first is New Piston. Just like it sounds, this is where you would create a new piston. Next up is Dashboard. Here you will find a bunch of different tiles that show the status of different devices Webcore has access to. This section is currently under development and not much can be done here. Next up is Fuel Streams. A fuel stream is essentially an aggregate data collection that is then visualized. Right now I do not have any set up, but I will probably make a few for some future videos. Next is Backup Pistons. This allows for you to bulk backup your pistons. Here you can select which pistons you want to backup or select all of them. The backups can then be used to restore them. Next is Settings. Here you can add places, manage your categories, and set up integrations. Right now you can integrate Webcore with If This Then That or LifeX. To set up either, follow the instructions under the service. You can also set up the ability to remotely execute pistons as well through the SmartThings IDE. And finally, the last option on the side menu is to log out. With many navigation out of the way, let's jump into the main reason Webcore is so awesome, pistons. A piston is a script that contains a group of elements arranged so that the logic and flow of the piston perform tasks in a desired sequence. To create a piston, click on New Piston on the dashboard. In the new window that opens up, you can either create a blank piston, duplicate one of your other pistons, restore a piston from a backup code, or import a piston from a backup file. For now, click on Create a Blank Piston. Here, you can fill in your name or whatever you'd like under Author and then give your piston a name. You can also enable Automatic Backup. If you click on Disclaimer, you get additional information about what the backup process does. You can also configure a description for your piston under the Advanced Options. Once done, click on Create. This will bring us to the main piston dashboard. Here you can toggle many different options such as showing variables, complex ifs or restrictions, allow for the ability to drag statements within the piston, and show the evaluation console. For now we can leave all of these alone. 
Next to the toggle buttons is an undo and redo button as well. The far right top corner is where you would either save or delete your piston. You can also open an options menu which is identical to the option toggles we just went over with a few additional options. And finally in the piston dashboard is the piston configuration itself. For this part I think it's best to work through setting up a simple piston. For this example we will be setting up a piston to turn on a light when a door sensor triggers is opened and to turn off when the sensor triggers is shut. Within a piston you can have one or more statements. A statement can be an if block, an action, or a timer. You could also enable advanced statements, but is something we won't be looking at in this video. For this piston, we will have two separate if blocks, one for when the sensor triggers open and another when it triggers closed. So let's get started. To create the first if block, click on add a new statement, which can be found under execute. This will open a new window. Click on the add an if button. For those new to scripting or programming, an if block, also known as an if statement, is simply a logical flow where if something occurs, such as if a door opens or if it's 10 a.m., something will happen, such as a light turning on or a text message being sent. In WebCore, you can have a single statement for an if condition to be true, or you can have a group of conditions. You can also have more than one thing happen when the statement is true. After clicking on add an if, a new window will appear. Here you can either choose to add a single condition or a group of conditions. For this piston, just select add a condition. From here, you will select the device or event you want to trigger. For us, it's going to be a door sensor and its contact. We will then want to select a comparison of changes to with a value of open. One thing to note within WebCore is that you can select multiple devices here. You could have multiple doors trigger this piston. All you would do is select the devices you want to trigger instead of just one. You then also have the ability to have any of the selected devices trigger the piston, or you can have all the devices have to meet the criteria for the piston to trigger. After your condition is all set, click on save. Doing so will bring you back to the piston dashboard. The next step is to create the action that will occur when the statement is triggered. To do this, click on add a new statement under the then section. This will open the add a new statement window we used previously, except this time we're going to click on add an action. From here, you can select the device or devices you want to be affected by the trigger, then click add. This will bring a new window up where you can figure what happens with the device or devices selected. For this if statement in our piston, we will turn a light on. So select the light and click add. Next, open the drop down menu and either scroll down to turn on option or you can actually type in the search bar. You can add restrictions as well to this action based on modes the hub is in. For us, we are not going to have any restrictions so we can just click save. And with that, we have half our piston completed. Taking a look at what we have so far really shows just how easy it is to read what's going on in the piston. Next will be to add our second if statement and that is for turning the light off when the door is shut. Technically, you can use the else statement and the first if statement to accomplish this if you desired, but I personally like breaking things out into separate if statements. It makes troubleshooting easier and removes a layer of unneeded complexity. Add a new if statement, you will need to click on add a new statement under the end if. This will open a new statement box where we will click on add an if. From here, click on add a condition. For this condition, we will select the same sensor and the contact option. Then, pick Changes to for the comparison and then select Close this time and save. Next, we will add the action under the Then section. We will follow the same steps as the last if statement, but this time, instead of turning the light on, we will turn the light off. Now that our piston is all done, it's time to save. To do so, click the Save button on the top right hand corner. This will bring us to a different screen for the piston. From here, you can see information such as current piston state, last time it was executed, next time it'll run if a timer is involved, and many other bits of information. On the top left, you could pause or resume the piston. You can also change the category of the piston if you have them set up. You can also easily set up automatic backup at the top right hand corner if desired. You can also see the piston itself here. Looking over the script, you will notice a few lightning bolts. These mean that the line is subscribed to something that will act as your trigger for the piston. Scrolling down, you can see a log section. Here you can enable different levels of logging to troubleshoot what your piston is doing. Let's enable full logs here so we can see all the information when we test out our piston. We have our light here that happens to be controlled by a smart plug, and we also have our door contact sensor. Opening the sensor triggers the light to turn on as expected. We can also take a look at the logs and see everything that occurred between the sensor being marked as open and the light turning on. Closing the sensor causes the light to turn off as expected. Taking a look through logs shows us everything that happened to turn the light off. If you made it to the end of this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up as it helps out the channel immensely. I would also love to know what other piston ideas you would like to see in the comments below. So far I've gotten a lot of great feedback on this series and I've really enjoyed making it. 
I look forward to keep making more videos. Thank you for watching.